this is a quarter inch gap. Contrary to popular belief, a lot of people don't think you can weld anything over a loose eight or 532. But I'm getting ready to show you. This is a 532 wire right here, 532 stainless wire. So you put it flush against the bevel. There we go. See how much space you got between that bevel, the wire, the other side of the wire? A lot of space. It's almost twice the size of this wire here. 532 wire in between this bevel. So you can clearly see that it's either a quarter or, or better. But the root goes in just as perfect. tacks right there. As you can see that tack is pretty good. Let's see if I can widen it out for you. There's the tack there. That's what the top tack look like. This is a quarter inch gap. That's my side tack. Bottom tack there. Feather edge these corners. You can see right here. Feather edge. Really good. Feel like a ramp to walk on. You want to blend those corners in really good with the uh, bevel. Tack with the bevel. Blend in really good. You can notice there's a wide gap. Like I said, it's a 532 wire. Quarter inch gap. It really don't matter. You lose a you use a little heat and uh, it all works the same. So we got feather edge. This end, that end. We'll get on with it. So what I'm gonna do on this particular tack right here, it's not a bad tack, but I stuck my tungsten and you're never too sure about you know when you stick your tungsten it's a possible chance you can get a uh, tungsten inclusion and that could cause you to fail an x-ray so instead of me grinding it out grinding it out I got some time so um, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna cut this tack out right here that you see that's uh, circled in the red and with that I'm gonna show you exactly how to fix a bad tack or maybe it's a spot in your weld you don't like you know, whatever lack of penetration or whatever it may be but this is how you do it check it out all right so what i'm going to show you is this here if you ever mess up on a tack you don't like it you don't like the penetration for some reason 
I'm going to show you how to do it. All you have to do is take your grinder, lay it to the side of the bevel, right flat against the bevel, and grind it down. Remember, keep the grinder right flat against the bevel. And just grind it out. Grind down until it cuts through. And then you're going to flip the grinder the other way. And you're going to hold it flat against the bevel on the other side. And you're going to grind it till it cut straight through. And I'm going to show you what that's going to look like after you cut straight through. As you can see where I begin to cut straight through. Now let's take another look at it. So as you can see, I held the grinder flat against the bevel and I just grind right into it. Take a look at it. And you can see the rest of the bevel. Where I didn't weld, now you can follow it on out and pretty much see that it looks the same as I cut the tack out. Now I'm gonna, as I stated again, you flip the grinder around, hold the bevel, hold the grinder flat against the bevel, and you take the rest of that tack out. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so now right here, as you can see where I started to grind the rest of the tack out, I'm not quite through, but I'm just showing you how it starts to look as you begin to grind the rest of the tack out. The excess tack that you're trying to remove, it gets a little flimsy, so you can actually bend it out of the way, flick it that way. You can do that until it breaks off. Let's go and pop that out of there. And you can actually start to see where it starts to again look like the rest of the bevel. This is not a hard technique, it's just something pretty easy. So let's go ahead and finish grinding it out, show you the finished result, and then maybe you can do this one day. Again, this technique comes in very handy. Taking the test, you make a mistake, you're going too fast, you slip, whatever may be the problem, you should always know how to go back and repair it. So stay tuned. Okay, so now looking back at it, there was a tack there as we've seen previously. The tack is all gone. It's still a bevel as you can see. The bevel is not all flat and messed up. Why? Because I held the grinder right against the side of the bevel, not too much pressure, that's the key, don't use too much pressure, don't go too crazy with it. So now, after you get the tack out, you want to go inside the pipe with a wire or whatever, something at least 3 eighths of an inch around. And just kind of pluck over the access root that's left in there from you pretty much grinding it out now don't worry about this right here you can just flick it over flick it over flick it over and again you would look inside the pipe with your flashlight and see how much is left behind but whenever you put that Healy arc on it it's so sucks up anyway so the best thing you can do is do your best to get some of the excess root out of the pipe but whatever's left over again as you begin to put your root in those little small flakes flimsy flakes is what I call them it easily um, sucks up into the puddle and don't become a problem so don't worry about it Think about it. If you melting down this one eighth thick wire, these little flimsy pieces are like what? Almost a little bit thicker than the width of a piece of paper, in a sense. So if you're going to melt this wire when you put the heliarc on it, you know it's going to melt this right here. So 
like I said, I like to just get them flipped over to the side, kind of flatten them out against the side of the bevel. And then I just go ahead and move on with my root again. Now this is the technique that you're gonna also need also to know. Again, this is a quarter inch um, gap. Why is it a quarter inch gap? Because ah, I like wide gaps. And whenever you're using a wide gap, it's always a for sure way you know that you're getting the right amount of penetration. You can see everything you're doing. You can control your, you know, your flow of your puddle. But um, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and get it in. I'll show you what that looks like. But if you do want to know this technique more in depth on how to do a wide gap like this, maybe a 532 or a quarter inch, you got to go to the website, ChrisTanner.com. ChrisTanner.com. C-H-R-I-S-T-A-N-E-R.com. And uh, get the tutorials and you'll be well on your way. So right now I'm in the field. This is a uh, Schedule 80. <clears throat> Schedule 80 carbon steel. And these are some of the issues that you may come across in the field that, listen, as a welder, you're supposed to know how to weld and at the same time how to fix something that you don't really like or maybe you're not confident in. In this case, I was kind of in a rush, so whatever. This is going to be x-rayed, so I thought, no. I got three tacks in. There's no need me second guessing myself. I might as well just cut it back out and do it again. And that's what I've done. Let's take a look at the root pass. This is the root pass here. I don't think you need to see the whole thing, do you? Or maybe I ought to go all the way around. That's the root pass right there on a the quarter inch gap. Nice. It's not too ugly as far as the outside. The inside is really good. I'll try to give you a little. Yep, shot with that look like. 